Welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. I'm afraid today is going to be a very quick and boring session, um, but it's something that we all want to know the answer to. So the question we want to try and answer today is how does the power output from the tube change with water temperature? To achieve this I'm going to run my standard test of 20.2 seconds but I should be measuring the power coming directly out of the laser and as you can see I'm firing straight down at my steel plate no reflections up here at all I can feel just the merest amount of warmth but in the meantime I'm going to be running the machine at about 60% power which is virtually its maximum on a very slow crisscross pattern and that's it all it would do is just move along at 60% which is 19 milliamps and I'm going to watch the temperature go up as it does that. I should watch the temperature go up and as it goes up by two or three degrees and I haven't determined yet but as it goes up by a fixed amount I will stop the machine and run the power test. I think probably two degrees is a fairly good increment. So that's the temperature of my water returning to the tank. And now that it says 15 degrees, I shall stop this test. Swap my file over to the other file, unfortunately. It's a little bit tedious. As you can see, as soon as the laser stop, temperature drops off very quickly. So what I'll do, I'll run the power test for a few cycles to get it back up to 15. There we go. Oh, never seen it that high, 40.5 watts. So you certainly won't want to sit here for an hour or so watching the temperature gauge go up. You can leave me to it and we'll come back and look at the results. Still running at 19 milliamps. We're coming up to 37 degrees C. And this slightly cruder check down here says 37.7. Well, I was planning to stop the test at 39. Uh, who would ever run their machine at that sort of temperature? But um, I haven't seen a drop off, a serious drop off yet. So I'm going to push it a few more degrees and see where I get to. Um, in the meantime, I think I'll just explain to you that where I am here in the UK near London, um, we don't get extremes of temperature like in other parts of the UK at the moment we would expect to maybe get down at night time to close to freezing but not quite. Last night for example it was down at 2 degrees C but it has been minus 2 or minus 3 in the past couple of weeks. Now that made me a little bit fearful that um, glass tube, water, freezing, not a good thing. My little tank here is sitting in a 10 millimeter ply jacket and it sits down to this level here now below this level here is an air gap and it's got a closed bottom there's another piece of ply on the bottom that it sits on a ply shelf but in that gap underneath there there are two bulbs 100 watts of energy that I can switch on when this temperature up here which is the same as the return temperature from the tank in other words when it's not working it's measuring generally the tank temperature and when it gets to 12 degrees C, sorry, I think when it gets to 10 degrees C, it switches the lights on and it also, from an independent power supply, switches the pump on to circulate water around the tube and in the tank so that nothing, there's ever, never any possibility that anything will freeze. In addition to the temperature probe that is in the tank, I've also got another temperature probe that sits here in this air gap inside the enclosure when the lid is on. Now that doesn't do anything to the water, it doesn't switch the water on, but what it does do is when the temperature again gets below 10 degrees C in this enclosure, although you can't see them from any direction because they're hidden inside, but they're just literally underneath the floor of this, this enclosure here, I've got two 50 watt halogen bulbs which are basically heating up the floor of this enclosure to keep this enclosure warm. 
I used to manufacture laboratory water baths for germinating seeds and as part of the test equipment for checking those out I manufactured um, with some again some NTC probes I've got a little five-way spider there with five temperature probes going into it so I was doing this monitoring to make sure that during the coldest weather that we came across that there was sufficient energy with 100 watts under the tank and 100 watts in the machine to keep everything well above freezing. Now I can hear quite a few of you probably saying well why don't you just put some antifreeze in there? Now I don't know what the chemical reaction between um, antifreeze and epoxy seals are but I don't want to risk that. I've filled my system up with distilled water. It wasn't cheap but hang on I filled it up in July of last year. I've got a lid on it so that it doesn't evaporate and it's still at the same level as when I put it in. I haven't lost any fluid from that system in six months and when I test the water which I do regularly I just take it out and I feel the water. It's in no way slimy. It certainly isn't green I'm very happy with the condition of that water. I'm not ready to change it yet. It's lasted me six months. It'll probably last a year. We're just coming up to 41 degrees C. We'll run the spiral test. You'll notice how quickly the temperature drops back, but as soon as I start running the test, it'll come back up again. So I'm not testing this time. I always run the test once. wait for the temperature to come back up. Here it's coming up quickly now. We'll get ready for the next test. I'll run the test and if it gets up to 41, which it has, then I can run this test for real. Well it's still showing 38.2. <clears throat> So let's go and reflect on those results. Just before we get on to the results of the temperature test, I'm just going to bore a few of you that live in hot climates like um, Australia, uh, California. Um, let me just think about that for a minute. No, I'll get on with this. If we start at the bottom of the graph, the red line there represents the external air temperature outside my workshop. The blue temperature represents basically on the floor within my workshop. The green line is the temperature in the body of the machine where the work table is. The main attempt there was to keep that above freezing point or at least sufficiently warm so that we didn't get dew settling on the rails. And I think you can see that we've managed to achieve that by keeping the temperature in the main section at about 5 degrees C even though the external air temperature was minus 2. The top line is the water tank. You can basically see the 100 watt lamp switching on, switching off and it cooling down, switching on and cooling down. It's maintaining quite a nice temperature there between about 11 and 12 degrees C. The pink line might look a little bit choppy but that's only because of the 10 minute sampling. Basically it's showing that the laser tube itself in its little enclosure stays warm at about 10 degrees C. My conclusion from this is that I don't need any more than 100 watts in the machine and 100 watts underneath the tank. Between those two things I've got sufficient heat going in there to make sure that nothing freezes. OK let's go on to our other graph now. Now the machine was running on full power for about two and a half hours. Uh, it started off at 40.5 watts. It did actually go just about to 41 watts at one stage. Well I've never seen that or happen ever before. Um, and it wasn't a fluke of the way in which I was using the, um, the meter or anything. Um, can't explain it but all of a sudden my machine has decided that it's going to give me another couple of watts. But we can see that over time there's a definite downshift in the power. But is it that much? We've lost two and a half watts basically by going from 15 degrees C up to 41 degrees C which is a 25 or 26 degree C temperature change. The most I've ever run mine at in the summer months has been at about 35 degrees C and I thought that was a little bit on the high side but I didn't notice any really serious power loss. 
and now I can see why. It may well, if you ran at high temperatures, it may well affect the overall life of the, the, the tube. A supposition, not a fact. Now whether or not what we're witnessing here is a as a dissociation and then a reassociation and then a little bit of dissociation and more reassociation it seems rather strange that you should get these um, these curves in this shape um, rather than a linear drop although there's an average linear drop it's a bit puzzling so yeah we've come away with one answer temperature doesn't have a huge effect on your power output but then there are other questions that have been raised and they're probably beyond my technical capability to really come up with an answer. So we should just have to leave it like this. If we go to a recognised good quality tube manufacturer like Recky Laser, what we find here is it tells us that the operating conditions for their particular machine, they do say here that the operating conditions for water cooling using purified water, two to five litres a minute, well I'm using two litres a minute, circulation flow. Um, the water temperature can be between 10 degrees C and 40 degrees C. So, you know, we've covered that range more or less here. So there's a very interesting subject there about working performance. Um, I think I'll leave you to come back to this website and do a bit of reading for yourself. We've got another tube company here called Mactron. And what do they recommend? See, they recommend the cooling temperature is controlled between 25 and 30. So the upshot of that is that different manufacturers recommend different temperatures. Now, a few people have actually commented the fact that uh, they missed number 40. What happened to it? Um, well, the answer is it never was. It was in my folder, uh, prepared, but not ready for release. This wasn't the subject, but this is now the missing 40. So the series is now continuous. My apologies.